Hello and welcome back to The Wargamer and you're joining me for another bolt action painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how to paint the British paratroopers using the Army Painter range of paints to do so. The first task after assembling your miniature is to prime it and this is so that the later layers of paint will stick to the miniature better. And as always I've used my grey spray primer for this. Once primed, the first task is to paint the jacket. And for this, I'm using Desert Yellow, as this will give us this nice yellowish khaki color that we can use as a base color for the paratrooper's jacket. As with all of the base coats in this tutorial, I've created a mixture of two parts paint to one part water and applied this over the surface of the jacket. Now, once this is dried, then apply a second thin down layer, and this will give us a really nice base color in which to work up from in later steps. The next step in painting the paratrooper is to tackle the camouflage pattern on the jacket and also the green helmet as well. And for both of these areas, I'll be using Venom Worm. When painting the camouflage, simply apply them in random geometric patterns across the jacket. Make sure you apply a couple of thin down layers, this will give you a really nice solid color. If you're struggling with your camouflage scheme, simply take a look online as there's lots of resources that you can copy for getting that camouflage scheme just right. The final step in getting the base colours for the camouflage pattern is to add some patches of crusted saw to the jacket. Again, apply this in random geometric patterns across the jacket and also go for at least two thin down coats. At this stage, the jacket is looking much too bright and we want to darken it down and also get some shading in the recesses by applying a wash of dark tone ink. Now, much like our base layers, I would recommend applying two thin down coats. First of all, create a mixture of one part ink to one part water, apply this across the entirety of the jacket, allow it to dry thoroughly before applying a second one over the top. This will help to achieve a much more consistent pattern of shading across the miniature. For this next step, I'll now be base coating any wooden weapon stocks on the miniature. For this, I'll be using fur brown. In addition to using this as a base coat, I'll also be highlighting the reddish brown areas on the jacket with the fur brown as well. Now to highlight, just use a very small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and lightly drag it across the raised edges of the areas we wish to highlight. With the base coat completed, the next step is to wash over the wooden areas of the weapons using light tone ink. This will pull into those recesses but still maintain that reddish brown colour that we're looking for. The next step is to apply a highlight of troll claws and I'll be applying this both to the weapon and also the tan areas of the jacket. Again, for this step, I'll be using a small brush with just a small amount of paint on the tip of that brush and very lightly dragging it across those edges. If you're struggling for control over the paint, I would recommend creating a mixture of two parts paint to one part water. This will give you better control of the flow of paint. The next area of the miniature that I'll be tackling will be the webbing. I'll be starting off with a base coat of army green over all of these areas. In addition to using the army green as a base coat on the webbing, you can also use it to highlight the green patches on the jacket. Following the base coat of army green, the next step is to wash over these areas using military shader. This will pull into those recesses and really help to bring out the detail. In addition to washing over the areas we base coated with army green, you can also use this as a wash over the green areas of the helmet we painted in the previous steps. The final step in painting the green areas of webbing and equipment is to highlight it using combat fatigues. Now these areas are very detail rich, so this highlights will really help to enhance those details. The next area that we will be painting will be the face and hands. And for this, we want to start off with a base coat of tanned flesh. With the base coat completed, the next step is to start highlighting with barbarian flesh. Now I'll be focusing this highlight around the brow, the nose, the cheekbones, the jaw, and also the knuckles and fingers as well. To finish off the skin, I'll now be applying flesh wash over both the face and the hands. Now applying it out to the pot will be very strong, so we want to create a mixture of one part ink to one part water and apply this over both of these areas. After painting the skin, the next step is start painting some of the brown areas of the miniature using leather brown. Now this includes some of the scrim on the helmet, some of the equipment, the leather straps on the helmet and also the trousers as well. With a nice brown base coat achieved, the next step is to wash over these areas with a wash of strong tone ink. Remember to create a mixture of one part water to one part ink and be very careful when applying this, especially around the leather straps on the face. To finish off painting the brown areas, the final step is to highlight using monster brown. And as with all of our previous highlights, just focus on some of the raised sections of the miniature and you use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush. Next up, I'll now be painting all of the black areas of the miniature. So this includes the black leather boots, but also the metal areas of the miniature, such as those on the weapon, and also any buckles across the miniature. Now apply this paint as you would do any of the previous base coats in this tutorial, but when painting the metal areas, use a thin brush and choose a very small amount of paint on the tip of that brush. 
With the base coat completed, the next step is to highlight the leather boots. And for this, I'll be using Dungeon Grey. You just want to use a very small amount on the tip of your brush to lightly pick out the individual panels on the boots. I'll now be applying a second highlight to the boots, and this time I'll be using Stone Golem. And for this, you just want to apply just a smaller dot on the upper sections of the boots, and this will just create the effect of light hitting these shiny areas and reflecting off. In addition to this highlight, if you have any areas on the miniature, such as a tin cup, you can also paint them using this colour as well. The next step in painting our paratrooper is to pick out all of the metal areas using gun metal. Now I'll be applying this as a highlight over the black areas we painted in the previous step, such as those on the weapon and also the buckles and such like that. And this will just give the effect of darkened metal. In these next few steps I'll be showing you how to paint both the British and Polish paratrooper berets. For the British beret we want to start off with a base coat of vampire red. Followed by a wash of red ink. Before finally highlighting the top and edges using dragon red. For the Polish beret, we want to start off with a base coat of uniform grey, followed by a wash of dark tone ink, and finally highlighting the tops and sides using filthy cape. Once the base colours have been achieved, we can now start working on the trim for both the berets, and for this, I'll be using matte black. The final step in painting the berets is to paint both of the emblems using gun metal. And here we have the completed paratrooper, who you can see I've also based. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below, and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future content. In the description below you can find links to both my Facebook and Instagram pages, where you can follow me and find out what projects that I'm currently working on. If you are a fan of my tutorials and would like to see me produce more in the future, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page. From there you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will just really help me in producing future content. So all that is left to say is thanks for watching, and goodbye.